Welcome back everyone to the newest video on my channel. I am very excited to share this one with you. So for today's topic, I've been thinking quite thoroughly about what could interest you. And I feel today's topic really is something that is a little bit buzzy at the moment. However, it's not really a new thing. It is kind of one of the quintessential basics when it comes to making sure that your skin is healthy and well-maintained. But I think thanks to the pandemic, thanks to all our skins just being stressed out all the time at the moment, thanks to, well, general stress, and also thanks to mask wearing, this is just the number one topic at the moment everyone is talking about and also many skincare brands now market their products specifically for this particular problem that a lot of people are experiencing and of course i'm talking about skin barrier breakdown or a damaged skin barrier or moisture barrier which is basically the same thing it's just two different terms for it so for today's video, first of all, of course, we need to understand what the skin barrier actually is. Now, I'm not a dermatologist, so I will just summarize <laughs> the dermatological stuff that I found online. So make sure to also watch videos on this from dermatologists because they are the ones who really have studied the skin and can explain these things from a medical and scientific perspective background and make sure to link sources in the description box for that there are a couple of really fantastic terms on youtube and whenever it comes to these types of scientific basics around skin i would always suggest to also refer to dermatologists but just as a summary first we're going to determine what the skin barrier actually is and then we're going to or i'm going to i don't know what i would say we so royal we i am going to uh, give you some pointers as to how you can determine whether or not your skin barrier actually is damaged, what can lead to a damaged skin barrier, and then things that you can do, just general tips and tricks, how you can repair and restore a damaged skin barrier if this is what you think might be a problem for you at the moment. And last but certainly not least, I'm also going to show you a little skincare routine with Korean beauty products that I feel would be ideal as a very minimalist, simple, straightforward skincare routine to repair your damaged skincare barrier. Okay, let's get started. So, what is the skin barrier? Now, in general, and you probably have heard that if you've already done your research on what to do about a damaged skin barrier, in general and in sort of mostly layman terms, that skin barrier is the outer layer of your skin, that layer that works as a protective layer against outside pollutants, bacteria. It helps keep out the nasties and it also helps to keep in moisture so that you don't just dry out like a, like a prune, right? When it comes to scientifically what the skin barrier is, again, I am an amateur, so <laughs> please watch a couple of dermatologist videos on this if you need the science behind it. But basically it consists of the so-called stratum corneum, which is that very, very top layer of the top layer of your epidermis. And it is kind of like, almost like a brick wall. It's quite interesting actually to see um, graphics of what the stratum corneum looks like, because it really just looks like very hard, very resilient, strong uh, skin cells that kind of sit on top of a, a, a more fatty, shall we say, layer of cholesterol, lipids, what was the third one? Oh yeah, ceramides, cholesterol, lipids, and ceramides. They kind of form almost like the mortar, I guess, of that brick wall. And then those uh, stratum corneum building cells, the, uh, what were they called again? I wrote it down, corneocytes, sit 
on top of that and are being glued together by that mix of lipids, cholesterol, and ceramides. And it's actually quite important that the stratum corneum is a little bit rougher or a little bit stronger, more resilient. We always have this idea that, you know, we just have to exfoliate away all the roughness. Well, we need a little bit of, uh, a little bit of roughness in that it really does form that impenetrable, near impenetrable barrier uh, that also makes sure that the moisture is kept locked into our skin. So that is why, spoiler alert, <laughs> over exfoliation is one of the problems that can cause the skin barrier to break down. So it is a protective layer. It is the most important protective barrier that keeps nasty stuff out and that also locks in moisture. So how do you know that your skin barrier is damaged? I think a lot of people are sort of confused as to what the signs are and sometimes you might think if your skin is a little bit sensitized, oh no my skin barrier is completely broken. No, you can actually tell when you have severe or moderate skin uh, barrier damage quite easily. So as I said, a healthy skin barrier keeps moisture in and nasty stuff out. So naturally, one of the first signs to notice that your skin barrier is broken down is that your skin starts to suffer from extreme dehydration. You just have a general sense of tightness to your skin. This is one of the warning signs for me that no matter how much hydrating stuff I put on my skin, it still just feels tight and uncomfortable. If you are drier skin types, you will also probably notice flakiness, extreme dryness, especially in delicate areas like your eyes, for instance. And also usually it starts to itch and just feel uncomfortable. What can also happen if you have certain skin diseases, such as rosacea, or if you struggle from acne, these tend to get aggravated if your skin barrier is compromised. You might also notice stinging when you put on products. I This is always really uncomfortable, and I have, uh, I have gone through that, especially in my teenage years, because I was a teenager before YouTube, so when I had acne, all I could do is go to the drugstore or the pharmacy and you do not want to hear the sort of stuff I put on my skin. <laughs> it was very often just pretty much pure alcohol and it just it was not good for the skin. It just dried it out completely and I just had some really terrible instances of a completely damaged skin barrier without actually knowing what that was because again, no internet during my teenage years. So yeah, you just have problems with itching, burning, aggravated skin diseases, you might have more breakouts, you might have more problems with eczema, etc. Just in general, a breakdown of the general healthy functions of your skin. And worst case scenario on top of that, the skin is red and inflamed and it's all just a downright mess. So some of the causes of the skin barrier I've already kind of hinted at, you can kind of guess what they are. Number one, of course, and I think this is the main culprit for many people who are really into skincare, I feel, <laughs> who maybe hang out a little bit too much at the, uh, what's it called, skincare addiction <laughs> subreddit, <laughs> where people constantly tell you to use retinol and whether or not you need it and throw on all the actives. So yeah, number one culprit with most people, uh, if we're all honest with each other, and I have, I've been there, so no judgment. <laughs> but it is, of course, the overuse of actives. So any type of active ingredient that could potentially cause skin sensitivity. Glycolic acid is one Definitely, if you use it in too high a percentage and too often as well, depending on your skin type, especially when you start out with acids, we have this tendency, I think, to get a little bit impatient. So we just kind of try to throw on all the acids because we want to see that glowing skin that we were promised. And then it's just way, way too much because we also remember the stratum corneum actually has a bit of 
a sort of a layer of, of rougher skin cells on top and we just kind of keep peeling that off and if we are doing it without the skin going also through its natural process of replenishing those skin cells uh, we will just have uh, this really nasty uh, very unprotective baby 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 skin that we keep scrubbing down keep scrubbing down it is not good same is true for physical exfoliation, so scrubs with physical peeling bodies of any type, like jojoba beads or sugar or whatever else you can use. Now, I'm actually not that against physical exfoliation. I think if you do it once in a while, it can actually just feel quite nice. And if you don't have super sensitive skin, it can be all right. But especially if you use chemical exfoliants, and physical exfoliants if you just scrub 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 it's just all a little bit too much so overuse of actives retinol is another one now retinol when you start using it usually does just start compromising your skin barrier it's very hard to to buffer that out the sort of damage it does to your skin in the beginning because it does it basically makes your skin peel there are a couple of ways to get around that and to just make sure that your skin barrier is strong enough to withstand that. But again, if you overdo it, if you're being too impatient, if you use it too often during the week or during the month when your skin isn't quite ready for that yet, you will probably have to deal with the damaged skin barrier quite quickly. So always be careful with that. Another classic culprit in the skincare community, and again, um, Guilty is charged. Hi, <laughs> I've done this plenty of times, especially as a blogger and reviewer, trying too many new skincare products at the same time. Usually when we talk about skin routines and have example skin routines, me being us being, um, you know, us influencers or however you want to call us, we usually try to recommend not just switching out your entire routine and throwing 10 different new products on your face at the same time because it's very difficult to then determine whether or not you are sensitive or allergic to one of them. And also, in general, skin tends to be a little bit overwhelmed if you just switch out everything and start a completely new routine with completely new things. Again, especially if you then also start with actives. So that can just be a little bit too much and your skin can just start to not be very happy. Um, another classic one is that you are in fact sensitive or allergic to a specific skincare product, especially if you keep using it, maybe because it's a cult product and you think, no, it has to work, it works for everyone. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, unfortunately, you can be allergic to pretty much everything. So even the best product in the world, let's say the Cosrx Snail Mucin Essence, if your skin doesn't like snail mucin, if you're allergic to snail, uh, this might cause a severe allergic reaction and it will cause the stinging. It might start make your skin just start freaking out. And again, if you continue using the product, you will continue to cause damage and that will make uh, your skin barrier break down. For me personally, when it comes to allergies, another thing that I always notice putting a severe strain on my skin barrier, I'm very careful to just nourish it and make sure it still stays resilient. But I, it's this one is a big one for me and you might also be feeling it because we are in spring and it's of course seasonal allergies. A uh, wonderful hay fever. <sighs> Sufferers unite, because mine at the moment is absolutely terrible and I do notice it on the skin. Now skin doesn't fully absorb everything you put on it or everything it touches. There's always this myth that everything that we put on our skin gets completely absorbed. That's not quite how that works. Uh, because otherwise you would drown if you were in rain, right? <laughs> or you would get drunk if you put alcohol, you know, those alcoholic disinfectants, hand disinfectants. We would all be drunk 24-7. We would die of alcohol poisoning. So that's not how it works. However, actually when pollen, which is the allergen for hay fever, touches your skin, then yes, it can cause the same allergic reaction as it does in your sinuses and in your eyes. And so redness, stinging, inflammation, uh, dryness, uh, exasper exacerbation of uh, other problems that you have with your skin, 
that can all get worse and again just puts a strain on the skin barrier and it might actually severely damage it so if you have hay fever come spring i would always advise you to really scale down your skincare routine and be very mindful of strengthening and supporting your skin barrier so that it doesn't get to cause any severe damage. And then, of course, also something we sometimes overlook a little bit, although I feel in recent years this has become a big topic and people are more aware of this now, uh, is the use of a too harsh cleanser. It is very advisable to always look for a low pH cleanser. Now, what is the perfect pH level? What is that low pH value? Usually, experts say between 5 and 5.5. Now, usually, you don't have to buy little pH strips and check all of your products. They are usually master lists and, and blog posts and Instagram content out there that has usually already tested, trialed and tested most of the common cleansers out there. So I would first always Google if you can't find out the pH value before you freak out that the pH value of your cleanser might be too harsh. It also always helps to look for uh, cleansers, especially foaming cleansers. The oil cleansers usually are fine for the skin barrier. They don't need a specific pH value. This is only for the second step or foaming cleansers because the cleansing agents in those the surfactants in those cleansers cause a too high pH level usually, depending on what it is. You know, actual straight up soap has a very high pH level. This is why we say, please don't use soap on your face because it is just a little bit too harsh. I know your boyfriend probably does it and his skin is perfect, but you know, <laughs> we're all here because our skin is not that, that perfectly chill, right? So low pH cleansers, foaming cleansers, or cleansing milks even, or non-foaming micellar cleansers. This is sort of where you want to go. And you should be very careful if a cleanser feels too stripping after you use it. That usually means that it is too stripping also when it comes to that um, protective layer of skin. You know, the cholesterols, the lipids, and the ceramides usually also get stripped away, not just the dirt that you want to strip away. So low pH cleansers and avoid harsh cleansers, which uh, I guess naturally already <laughs> gets us into the next topic, which is, of course, what you can do in order to heal a potentially damaged skin barrier. So your skin barrier is broken down or it is at least damaged or maybe just a little bit sensitive. I also need to point out, please don't freak out if your skin just feels a little bit red or a little bit sensitized. That does not mean automatically that your skin barrier is damaged, right? I always feel this might just be me because I'm a little bit older. <laughs> But I sometimes feel now that the skincare community has uh, gained a lot of new people. I think especially 2020 was this huge skinfluencer boom where people just kind of, I guess, had a bit more time and started looking into perfecting their skincare routine. And it all became a little bit, a little bit clickbaity. And I'm not a fan of clickbait. And I feel there's a lot of black and white thinking and a lot of um, freaking out over things that maybe don't need freaking out. So just calm down, take a breath. If you have used too many actives, if you feel your skin is maybe a little bit sensitized, that doesn't automatically mean you now have to strip down your routine and, and do all of these things to heal your skin, Mary. It might just mean... Your skin needs a little time out, maybe for one or two days, and then it will probably be fine again, right? I just wanted to say that because I always feel everything is about shock value and, oh no, everything is broken and now you need all these experts to tell you how to fix yourself. I'm just here to give very calm, <laughs> level-headed advice. However, if you feel your skin barrier actually is truly damaged, if you have all of these really scary things happening like the super extreme dehydration, the itchiness, the burning, 
the flakiness, maybe even almost like a feeling that your skin is getting thinner. That is the moment when you really should take a few weeks to heal your skin barrier and then to slowly go back to your regular routine. And of course, avoid whatever caused the damage. So what can you do? I already said one, right? Try to use very gentle cleansers. I would actually advise to maybe cut out the strong foaming cleansers completely. There are a couple of foaming cleansers that I know that are gentle enough to still be used. The Bar Centella Asiatica cleanser is one of them, which I'm going to show you a little bit later, which is... It really is one of the gentlest cleansers that I know. It does foam up, but the foam is very soft, very gentle. It's great. Otherwise, cleansing milks are fantastic. And also non-foaming sort of jelly cleansers. Uh, Geek and Gorgeous, one of my favorite brands in the world, <laughs> has a jelly cleanser that uses micellar te uh, technology. Uh, it's called Jelly Joker. That one, hugely recommended because it is so, so, so gentle. And then another really important thing, of course, to do, and it might make you feel a little bit grumpy, but it is probably the best thing you can do to heal your broken skin barrier, is to avoid actives. So really take a break, not just for a couple of days, but if you have severe skin barrier damage, you need to really go <laughs> cold turkey on the actives. And I mean, all of the actives, and that includes your high percentage niacinamide serum. A low percentage is fine, but maybe cut out the 20% booster or the 10%. Go with the 5% or lower because niacinamide is good for your skin barrier. But if it goes over 5%, it actually can be drying and damaging. So I'll always be a little bit careful with those higher percentage niacinamide products, but also, of course, your retinols and especially your chemical exfoliants, because those are usually the ones where we tend to overdo it a little bit. So <laughs> take a little break with those. I would say three weeks, maybe even four weeks. See how you feel after two, and then maybe very gently after two or three. Again, I would actually say four. Gently rotate them back into your routine, but cutting down on how often you use them during the week, because that's probably why you have all that damage because you just threw too much active stuff on your face. And then I would also advise you to cut out any fragrance or alcohol for a while. Now, I'm not actually anti-fragrance. I always think that is another one of those extremes that I see in the skincare community, that everyone is like, no fragrance, all fragrance is damaging. That's not quite the case. Lab Muffin did a fantastic video on this that I'm definitely gonna link in the description box because she just always has such a wonderful level-headed way of looking at these things. And the thing is, if you are sensitive to fragrance, of course, cut it out. If you're allergic, 100% cut it out. But not everyone is allergic and not everyone is sensitive towards fragrance. So for me personally, usually I can handle fragrance very well. And I like a nicely scented product. I'm a little bit old-fashioned when it comes to that. However, now that we have hay fever season and I know that my skin barrier is already overly taxed from having to uh, fight off all those allergens in the, in the air, right? I usually actually try to go fragrance-free as much as possible because it is just better to not risk it and have my skin suddenly become sensitive towards something it can usually handle, which can happen when your skin barrier is compromised because it's not like fragrance is good for your skin, right? It's not needed and there are a lot of fragrance free options and i have a lot of fragrance free fragrance free stuff in my on my shelf so that's all fine so alcohol again actually a little bit of alcohol and skincare once in a while is not the, the complete devil that some people paint it it can actually help for instance um with a skin penetration for certain uh ingredients that are harder to get into the skin it also works as a dissolvent for sort of powdery ingredients. So it, it, from a formulator's perspective, it does make sense to sometimes use alcohol. And if it's used properly in a good formula, it doesn't actually necessarily dry out your skin. However, 
if you already have very sensitized dried out skin it is definitely better to go for an alcohol free formula because what you are trying to do is heal your skin barrier but also replenish all that lost moisture from it all kind of evaporating out of the damaged uh, stratum corneum right so focus on hydration and focus on cutting out whatever can take out that dryness or potentially aggravate your skin. This also means that you should try to go for a more minimalist routine. Again, actually in general, I'm not one of those people who thinks everything has to be minimalist. I sometimes like a multi-step routine. Do I sometimes use two toners in one routine or two serums or even both? Yes. I'll admit it, I know it's not fashionable, but sometimes I just really like to layer my stuff, as we used to do when we started with K-Beauty. But it is not advised to do that if you already have a damaged skin barrier or if you want to just repair your skin, if it is a little bit overtaxed, because if you use a lot of products, it can actually just cause your skin to feel overloaded and to feel a little bit stressed out. So minimize your routine, cut out the actives, use a gentle cleanser, and also avoid physical exfoliation. Cut that out completely during the time where you heal your skin barrier. It will probably be too much. What you can potentially use as a physical exfoliant that is very, very gentle is just one of those um, wash powders, Korean wash powders. They're actually really good and usually aren't too abrasive, so that usually works quite well. So what can you do to replenish the lost moisture from the damaged skin barrier? Well, the best way is to just use a lot of humectants in your skin routine. And humectants are so-called water-grabbing ingredients, so they basically keep moisture locked into your skin. Uh, classic ones that you probably already know are glycerin, hyaluronic acid, beta-glucan is another one, uh, urea is another really good one. So look for uh, hydrating products, toners and serums in particular, with that ingredient. Once you have put on your hydrating layer, uh, either a toner or a serum or both. I would advise you to have both if you are severely dehydrated. Uh, with all of your lovely humectants, which you also want to do because your skin barrier is broken down and because it is harder for your skin to hold on to all that hydration, I would advise you to then seal all of that in with an occlusive moisturizer especially overnight. It's not that important, I would say, during the day, as long as you find a moisturizer that also contains all of those components that you find in that lipid barrier, especially ceramides. Look for a moisturizer that contains ceramides. But at night, we usually suffer from a lot of um, transepidermal uh, water loss anyway, so it is better to use an occlusive uh, cream. So what is an occlusive? Occlusive basically means uh, a barrier forming type of cream or sleeping cream or of course at the moment everyone is crazy about slugging. Slugging is just another way of putting on an occlusive. It's nothing more, nothing less. In this case they use pure Vaseline. I don't really think that would work for my skin. I'm actually going to do a little experiment and going to try it but I have a feeling me and mineral oil, we usually don't do that well together. Not because it's a bad ingredient, but it is usually just a little bit much for my combo skin. But I mean, try, try slugging. Slugging is very good if you can tolerate pure mineral oil or petrolatum. Uh, it's very good because it is just a pure occlusive, basically. So uh, use all of your hydrating layers, use a regular moisturizer. The slugging does not replace your moisturizer. It really just forms a barrier. It doesn't really give you any moisture if it's pure Vaseline. And then put on your Vaseline. And then, you know, you should probably wake up to much plumper and uh, better hydrated skin. But you can also use just a regular, for instance, like a Sika Balm that works really well as an occlusive or a classic sleeping cream or sleeping mask. That also is uh, usually 
uh, quite strong in silicones and um, mineral oils. All of these are occlusives. Since another thing that can actually at least aggravate any problems you have with your moisture barrier is dry air. What can also help is if you do live in a dry climate to get a dehumidifier. That also helps with the whole moisture loss because it helps all the humectants that you have on your skin to then have enough moisture to grab onto from the air, basically. So a dehumidifier might help. Now, if you already live in a very humid climate, don't do that because then you're again overdoing it as with all of the things. Uh, sometimes when we overdo it, put too much product on, put too many humectants on, put too many everything on your, our skin in a panic trying to heal our skin, that will actually just cause more damage. And it's the same with a too humid climate because then that is also not great for your skin, which you probably know if you've ever been in a humid climate because, for instance, I always break out. Also, if we remember the problems with maskne, this is exactly where they came from because it was this deliciously humid climate under the mask that all the bacteria found wonderfully exciting and just they started growing and causing all those pimples and breakouts. So you want to be kind of in a sweet spot between air that isn't too dry and also not too humid. So <laughs> that's how you regulate that. Either get a dehumidifier or get a humidifier. Did I say dehumidifier before? I hope I didn't. But if I did, I meant get a humidifier if you have dry air and a dehumidifier if you have humid air. <laughs> All right. And because I thought it would make sense to maybe show a little bit more of a practical example of what you can do to heal your skin barrier and the sort of products that I use when my skin barrier is compromised. I'm going to show you a, an example routine with Korean beauty products that I'm using at the moment and that are super, super gentle and super, super good if you do struggle with a damaged or compromised skin barrier. Okay, first up we start with a low pH cleanser. Now I use too much lighting so you can't actually tell, but this is the Bar Cosmetics Centella Calming Gel Cleanser. This is such a gentle jelly cleanser, really nice soft foam. It only uses very gentle surfactants as well, fragrance free, alcohol free, all the good stuff. And I just really like it because it respects the skin barrier. Your skin will feel so nice after using this. Very smooth and relaxed. So either carefully pat your skin dry with a towel or just leave the water on. I prefer to dry my skin. And then we go on to step two, which is a hydrating toner. I use the V Green Fragrance Free Nature Mucin Toner such a great toner tons of humectants it is slightly viscous but it sinks into skin really nicely it doesn't leave sticky residue and it's so so hydrating really plumps up the skin gives the skin back precious hydration that it might have lost because it is damaged and on to step three i would advise to add a hydrating serum to the toner kind of have two hydration steps. It makes sense when your skin barrier is damaged. This is a really nice serum because it is very minimalist. The Torrid and Dive In Serum at the moment is just one of the most popular serums in Korea. It contains hyaluronic acid, panthenol, and yes, it gives a bit of a glow and we love to see a bit of a glow. Happy, happy, moisturized, hydrated skin. Step four, the moisturizer step. So I chose a very gentle cream that is very skin barrier repairing and it is the, the Lab by Blanc Douce Prebiotic Sera Cream. This contains probiotics and ceramides so it is perfect for a damaged skin barrier and to replenish moisture. Now this step is optional. Not everyone wants to use an eye cream. I need an eye cream. 
I am 43, so yes, I will use an eye cream. This is the Benton Fermentation Eye Cream. So, so good. Can really recommend this one. It is so gentle, fragrance-free, alcohol-free, and really brightens the eye area. Highly recommend it. Now, this product, oh, I love this product. So this is for your nighttime routine. This is that occlusive layer that I talked about earlier that helps seal in all that hydration for you. This is the Puncon Yul calming moisture repair balm this is a game changer seriously one of the best balm products i've used it doesn't feel sticky or heavy full of goodness like squalane shea butter oh i love this one and then if it's your morning routine of course you have to finish off with a sunscreen this one is the new beauty of joseon sunscreen it is so nice fragrance free alcohol free wonderful texture this is a chemical sunscreen so it doesn't give a white cast and it's great for all skin types pretty much so yeah in the morning you use your sunscreen after your moisturizer and in the evening i would suggest using an occlusive balm and otherwise keep it simple and your skin will thank you and just you know once in a while you can throw in a sheet mask if you want to or a hydrating wash off mask all right and that was it that was probably another long video i apologize <laughs> I always have too many ideas for one video, but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I see you again next time with a new video and I would be so, so happy if you could subscribe and support my channel that way. If you maybe left a comment, if the video was useful, you can also follow me on Instagram and I also have a K-Beauty podcast. I haven't updated it in a while, but that's mostly because not that many people listen to it. But if you start listening to it again, I guess that could maybe give me the motivation to <laughs> go back to recording. But for now, I'm quite happy doing my YouTube every week. So yeah, expect a new video next week. And I can't wait to see you all again. And I hope that I could be a little bit helpful in case you struggle with your skin barrier. Don't despair, don't freak out, and don't let anyone um, make you feel insecure about your skin, okay? So, bye! See you next week! Bye!